beast is the name of the game, but is the game the beast? What? This is a review for the board game Beast, the good and bad about it. By the end of this video, you will know if this is something you should hunt for. We have six beastie questions that we will answer in this video, but before we do that, Yanis, what is this game all about? It's about one player being the beast and all the other players trying to catch him. Before each game, one player will select the beast he will play and all the other players will select the hunters. And this one versus many game, well, one team wins, either the one or the many. The one wins if he kills enough civilians, villagers, or the hunters win if they hunt the beast. Or if the time runs out, right? What happens? I think he's like, ah, you know what, I'm not hungry anymore. Because he, I think, went out for like a weekend snack. There's a midnight snack and then there's weekend snacks. And he's like, nah, not hungry anymore. Until next time. And the game ends immediately when one of those things happens. The game is divided into two parts. The first part is card drafting, where there's a common pool of cards that all the players draft, no matter if they're the hunter or the beast. And then there's the second part of the round, where all the players will play cards one by one, doing the actions that are written on the cards. When it's your turn, it doesn't matter if you're the beast or the hunter, you can play up to two cards to move, to bite, to run, to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, that's the f my favorite card. You play and then you have a good time. If we look at the map, then you will see the characters there, the beasts there, as well as these animal creatures that the beast will want to hunt. The beast is actually hidden. Each time the beast moves, they will leave a card on the board that says which way they went, either north, south, west. The other players don't know. But if the hunters go into a space where beast has been, the beast will have to place a track marker there. That's how they hunt or try to find out where exactly that beast is. What's even more exciting is that the beast will from time to time want to be found because that's the only way he can do the good actions. And with the good actions, I mean eating all the sheep. There's also character sheets with upgrades for beasts and hunters and different cards for the beast, different cards for the uh, hunters. They can upgrade their action decks and other tricky things that make this game pop. But let me guess, we'll talk more about that in the video. How did you know? What? How did you know that? Lucky I guess. I was just gonna say that. But what is the first question then? Hmm? Who would you buy this game for? Yeah, exactly. Three, two, one. 120 to 80, a uh, healthy heart rate. This game is quite stressful. It's fun stressful? F stressful? F what did you say? F stressful. It's just pronounced stressful with F in front of it. It's like f stressful. The hunters usually hunt the beast. Makes sense, right? But from time to time, the roles switch because the beast can also attack the hunters. So sometimes hunters will stress about the whole game as well. But it's fun. For me, it's... Uh... What did I write? That's how old I am, I can't even remember. I want to destroy you. And if you really enjoy where you're like, no, you know what? I, me alone, am going to destroy you. Then this is a game for you. Playing the beast might or might not be the most fun part of this game. We'll see. Dad jokes, dad hats, we have everything. Check out our merch store because we just added this cool hat. But there's also other designs that all about board gaming. And if you're a poor gamer, check it out. It helps us a lot if you support us that way. Or check out our Patreon. What is it? Three best things about this game already? It's exactly that. My number three is going to be the draft. Here, hate drafting is like whole another thing. Oh, you have the same thing. Each of those cards are either good for you or either good for the monster. And sometimes the ones that are good for the monster are not so good for you. But they're good for the monster, right? For the beast. You want to take them and it's the other way around. I'm so hidden right now and they're not gonna find me unless they get this card. But I don't need it that much. Maybe I should take the card and it's just these decisions. You essentially are already playing the game of hidden movement before you're playing the game of hidden movement. If that makes any sense. All actions that you will be able to do is dependent on what cards you will get. You want to leave good cards for your teammates, but you don't want to leave good cards for the beast. And there's actually not a lot of these action cards, right? The more you play, you can already know which cards you will want to keep, which you won't want to keep. There's so many decisions here just from the drafting alone. Third thing is the traps. The map is split into a few territories and you can place down in different territories these traps. You take one of those chips and hide it behind a card 
and you don't say what chip that is, which territory that is. But if a beast is revealed in such a territory, you're, ha ha, here's my trap card. Now you lose to health or something like that happens. And it's a very fun mechanism, especially if you play the beast and you know that there's a trap and you hope that it's not where you need to go. Everything about this game is like trying to mess with somebody else's mind, predict his movements, predict what cards, where he's gonna go. Guessing, yet kind of planning and knowing. It's a really nice mix between those. Okay, my second thing is going to be the flow of the game. One of my favorite design elements of a game is where your turns are quick and simple-ish. So here we have the draft phase where everyone's pretty much still playing all the time. And then there's the action phase. You just play a card and do what it says. And I just love those. I don't have to choose from like 20 bajillion different actions that will somehow be, you know, very different and that I have to read. Sure, the cards are different and sure, some of the abilities are different, but still you play a card and do what it says. So number one is the variety multiple beasts that you can play There's multiple hunters that you can play there's two sides of the board different missions for two or three or four players so it's easy to learn how to master the best ones almost always are that way it always will feel i think fresh actually my number one is exactly that i just picked one part of it which is beasts they are all very different and and feel different and and this is just the base game we will talk about beasts again in the next segment but generally I think it's the best part of the game by far because they all play different it's super fun to play them hunters have to adapt to each of them because they're different and adds so much variety and replayability of the game for first time playing you will have no clue how it works and what is strong what isn't and how to play against it how to play with it you need to learn that character and then I think you can get the most out of it why this game might not be for you so number one is, what will it be this time? I had very, very different playthroughs and I tried to play it more and more just to see, hey, is this how the game is or is it this way? And each gameplay was completely different. First time I played, I played the beast and I had a really, really good time. When the game ended, it turned out I'm the only one who had fun with who it. Who cares? Who cares about those losers? Did you win? Did you win? I did win. Yeah, so who cares about those losers? Very swingy experience from game to game I find, found. Do I want to put it on the table? Because it might be fun, but it might not be. Uh, remember I said uh, I really love how different the beasts are? That's kind of also one of my two issues with this game. Remember when we played one game and I thought, yeah, it's all balanced. And then we played the other game against the uh, one with the hands for hairs. You know, the one? Raga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we essentially skipped the last... <laughs> part of the game because we were skipping our turns all the time. I, I wish that we could say it was not fun playing, but we weren't playing at all. We were just, you know, do -do 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 standing there. And if that would have been my first experience, okay, I'm a professional gamer, so, you know, I I I'd still be fine. But somebody who's not a professional, if that would be their first time experience, they'd hate the game. They'd super hate the game just because they picked an unlucky monster maybe. And I think it's most likely going to be dependent on the monster you pick, how your experience is gonna go. I find it a bit clunky. A lot of the time, the last day or so, didn't matter at all. You have to do the draft and then you can do the last moment. Beast for sure knows he has already won the game while drafting the cards, because there's no way to stop him. But we just have to do that. Whenever a beast moves, he places one of those movement cards on the map, and then he has to remember where he went, which is not that bad, but when you have like 10 cards there, I think I went there, oh, wait a minute, I have to check all those cards. Feels a bit clunky. It's really, really nice, it's just not polished. This is the second game we reviewed in recent time where the amount of players is an issue for me. We reviewed Witcher recently and I would never play it with five or four players. And this one also feels like the sweet spot is three. If you're looking to play with more, it's just not gonna be as fun. The turns are gonna be long. Three is the best way to play. Uh, and for me, possibly maybe the only way to play. Last thing for me is Beast is fun. Beast is super fun. I really enjoyed my games when I played the Beast. All of them. Stressful and so intriguing to play and you feel like you're the mastermind of this game. But Hunters? Not so much. Sometimes I had a blast and it was fun, but a lot of times for Hunters it's... It depends on you, maybe. 
what you want to do more. I, I talked with the people that I, I played with and they felt kind of not hopeless, but what's the right word? Uh, Despaired? Depressed? What's the point of life? All of them. All of them at once. Well, how long do you think the honeymoon is in this beastly land? Three, two, one. Got to catch them all. I mean, I'm all about the beasts in this video. I haven't played through all of them yet. And I haven't played against all of them yet. The reasonable amount of time it takes to play a three player game makes me think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play all the beasts and I'm gonna play against all of them. And that's a lot of game right there. Best relationships take time. I feel like the game shows the best side when all of the people around the table play this game more and more and then find out what's the way best way to play it try out different beasts, find out which ones do you enjoy. And feeling wise, I don't think it will get that repetitive. The only thing that's limited is the action cards that you can draft. But as I said before, the more you play, the more you can use them in your advantage. What is the best alternative for this game? Three, two, one, Terror Escape. I have Sniper Elite, but you go first. It's also one versus many. Bad guy who's hunting all the people. He tries to at least kill one of them. The good guys want to fix the radio or do other stuff to get out of there in time. It's my favorite hidden movement game for sure. And it's a really good alternative to this game. This does a lot of things differently. Overall, the feeling and excitement wise, very similar, I feel like. For me, Sniper Elite feels like a very similar experience, but I still feel the stressful part of running around and hiding from the Germans. And then I feel like it's a better experience with less players than more. And also the game time, it's fairly quick. It takes with two players less than an hour of Sniper Elite. And this one is also like with three players is an hour or more. It, it felt very similar to me. But now that you mentioned Terror Escape, I feel like, yeah, that's also a very good alternative because each of the killers there feels very different. And that's one versus many, because I wouldn't suggest playing Sniper Elite as one versus many. Both of these are good. is a good option, yeah. At least mine is. No, 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 both of these. Yeah, from both these, mine is for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the final rating? Three, two, one. So it's either good or very good or fantastic. Depends on the game you just played. I mean, I played some good games of Beast and then I played some very good games of Beast. And guess what? And I played some fantastic games of Beast. It's not a straight course. It's ups and downs. For me, it overall was okay because I can quite easily find alternatives to said Terror Escape and Sniper Elite, mind management, but it's okay unless you really like hidden movement games, that's your genre, you really enjoy it, you want to try out different things, then this is for sure different, it's very unique, it's interesting. I can yeah. totally see a lot of people enjoying it, although for me, I don't think I will put it on my table anytime soon. If it's in your place, you say, I really want to play Beast, I'm like, okay. Unless you have Terror Escape. Do you have Terror Escape? I guess we know where Terror Escape is staying at your place and Beast is gonna be at my place, huh? I really enjoy asymmetrical games where there are different teams with different goals and this does that. I love how they try to make all the beasts super different and they are and that is amazing. I, I like it. I think it's a good game. Sometimes even very good or sometimes even fantastic. Depends on the monster or how things turn out. I still like it. I still enjoy it. I still would play it again. But I guess not with Giannis. Unless I really, really, really want to, right? And there is no better games at your place. Okay. I guess we have to make a new video where I get rid of all my games and just put Beast in the shelf. That's a deal, Giannis. And we'll see you next time when we see Giannis' shelf just with Beast inside it. See you next time. Yeah, bye. Thanks for watching. No comments? No, no, or anything? You're just agreeing with it? No, no, of course it's not happening. Are you kidding me? No, it is. You just said it's on no, the video. No. no. It's on the video where you said yes. It was a joke. Nobody takes what I say seriously. <laughs>